Thank you, Reesh, for that awesome run. I have a $15 donation from Andrew saying, always love SGDQ, one of my favorite weeks of the year. Keep up the great work of running some of our favorite games quickly. Go ahead and start that ad break. We're going to go to a quick ad real fast, and then I'll be right back. Super Meat Boy Forever, a follow-up to the indie mega hit Super Meat Boy by Team Meat. For updates, you can follow them on Twitter at Super Meat Boy, coming in 2018 for Steam, consoles, and mobile devices. Website www.supermeatboy.com. $15 donation from Tim and Paul, absolutely mesmerized by Infested Reach's needle, nail-biting run of Battle Kid. Keep up with the fantastic gaming and, of course, with the, for the donations. $5 donation from Christian Clearly, currently MD slash PhD student. You guys are heroes. Keep up the great work. Uh, throw to the interview, please. Now we will be going to an interview with Infested Reach.
Hey, Giz, you shouldn't hear yourself anymore. You shouldn't hear yourself anymore, correct? Cool. We have a $100 donation from Girin Smith. I promised I would donate $100 for playing the GDQ song. Also, hopefully this motivates my pals on gaming exodus.com to donate since I plan on matching them up to $500. dollars $25 donation from Excessive. Shout out to Cerno TV. Hyped for this week. Much seer love. Donation goes to announcer's choice. Thank you. How's game audio, man? I'm just acting gifts around, yep. One second, then. $150 donation from Coaster. Greetings from Ireland, SGDQ. So, so happy to be able to donate during the marathon this time around and for such a tremendous cause. Putting this money to playing as Emily in Dishonored 2 never made sense to me that you could play as Core 4. The game is entirely her story. Best of luck to all the runners. May the RNG be ever in your favor. Okay, give me a second. Okay, I pulled it way back, how's that? Yeah, I talked the level you would talk. Hey Blake, pull your uh, mic in, man. Thank you. Uh, game audio, are you good for level? You cool, Giz? I can pull it up, man. $10 from UI person. Tis my first SGDQ, and I've got some spare money, so why not donate? As we are watching a speed run, we have to save the frames and kill the animals. Is that cool, man? Okay, throw it over. All right. Next up, we have Diddy Kong Racing Any Percent being run by Mrs. Gizmaluk. Can I access your mic? You're live. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, Diddy Kong Racing Any Percent. And I'm Giz. And uh, I hope you guys are ready. I'm Blake Bates. I'm Cold Melvin. I'm Praxity. And timing starts when I start the uh, game file. So three, two, one, go. So the any percent category in this game is very luck-based. So I'm going to do a bit of a safe route. It's going to be a little longer, but it will have a bit more content. So we should be good. But if I am very lucky, which I can be, then I'll just abort the uh, safe route and I'll do the fastest I can. So the, the goal of the game is to beat uh, the second Wispig race. Uh, to unlock the second Wispig race, you need to get to the last hidden level. To do that, you need four trophies and beat the first Wispig. And as you can see, we're using the uh, character TT. And, uh, He's an unlockable character, but he's cartridge-based, and he's not, um, he's not based on the save file, so that's why we allow to use him. 
it is the best character overall, so yeah. So first we're going to go collect a couple of balloons. And one thing I'm going to do kind of soon is maybe destroy um, some people's childhood dream or maybe fulfill it, I don't know. But I'll show you soon. All right. Oh. Oh. That's OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath the beach. And uh, I'm going to go to, OK, like that. Nice. And I will go to the first Wispig race, the first thing I do in the run. There you go. There you go. So the DKR community, we, uh, we usually call Wispig Gizpig after my username. So yeah, it's the Gizpig. It's also a Frank or Fancy emote in my chat. Now for a car, you want to tap the A button to increase your speed. And we want to make sure that whenever we hit a boost, we want to let go of the A button to get a better boost. I'm just showing you the map at the moment so you can see how far ahead of Wispig I am, if people are interested in seeing how much faster than Wispig we are. <laughs> this is a very difficult course, actually. Uh, I would say it's the hardest uh, car track in the game. Um, a lot of problems, a lot of lag, and uh, different factors that can affect the game negatively. Uh, but yeah, a lot of bumps that can screw up your drifts. And you could fall into pits, and that's not good to do. Like that. Like <laughs> <laughs> Still way ahead. Yeah, it's fine. OK. So as everyone knows, maybe, is that there's a long cuts in here. But I'm just going to reset the console so we can skip it. Because the, uh, the game saves as soon as that cutscene starts when Wispig is you know, being angry if we're losing. <laughs> so now we've beaten Wispig. And as Al Nim, uh, said earlier, the next objective is to get the four trophies from the four different worlds, so we can enter the last world. And so we go to the first world, Dino Domain. I hope you like this world. We do it a bunch. <laughs> yeah. So in the beginning of a race, you see I'm like restarting, which might look weird, but the first time you enter a race, then um, you can't skip the intro cutscene or like the uh, in thing like where they zoom in on the characters. So we just uh, reset the track and then we can skip it. It saves a very small amount of time, but it's it adds up over the run. There was a cutscene skip where you press the start button, the exact frame that you cross the finish line, and it allows you to skip the cutscene of Taj giving you a balloon, which saves about six seconds. Yeah, six seconds every time. They're very important to get. Yeah. And also, the first time you miss the cutscene skip, or like you get the cutscene, um, you can't skip like the, uh, what he flies and shows you, shows you the, uh, you know, 
the entire cutscene. So the first one you miss is a 23 second time loss. So it's uh, pretty harsh. Double single. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I missed the cutscene. So now we will see the uh, long cutscene. Hopefully you enjoy Taj. Yep. So yeah, this is what you don't want to watch in this category, basically. The guy who's supposed to help you, but he wastes all your time. All right. So now it's time for one of the harder tracks in the game, uh, Fossil Canyon. It, it has many things that can go wrong. Uh, so most runners have a, a big fear for this level. The strat that he's about to try is called Canyonless. It's really difficult, and you'll see. Yeah, and as you might know, like here, it's taken from the Canyonless in, D in uh, SM64. So on every track, there's bananas. Uh, up to a cap of 10, one banana will give you about 1% of speed. So you want to collect 10 as fast as possible during the race and then keep the 10. Oh. Wow, all right. Oil slicks are really common in this track, especially in the normal yeah, in track. In front of the zipper? Yep. Luckily though, with the trophies, uh, the CPUs will be in other positions, so they will probably don't do that. Okay, so this level, Hot Up Volcano, is very special for this run, and we will tell you more about it later, but you will kind of soon see um, why, and uh, one of the reasons why. So if you use a balloon here, and you boost some barrel roll underneath the ground, you can clip outside and clip out of bounds. One thing you notice is he's always barrel rolling, because barrel rolling allows the plane to get at a very high speed. Yeah. Like, it's like a small speed boost every time you do a barrel roll. Well, you want to make sure you're not pressing the A button while you're barrel rolling. I can turn on the, uh, the speedometer, as you can see. Oops. That's, oops. <laughs> I was a little bit cocky there. All right. So the thing is, what I missed there, it's like when you go out of bounds, you see those like indicators on the sides? They show you the, uh, the checkpoints around the track. Uh, and some of them are important, and some of them aren't. And um, so what we do when you go out of bounds is that we want to um, hit the important triggers so we, the game thinks that we're going in an entire lap. So that's the like, key of uh, going around there. Uh, this is the boss of the Dino Domain, uh, Tricky, the dinosaur. Yeah, Tricky the Triceratops. <laughs> this series is very interesting. At least for your left side of the joystick. Just turn left. Yeah. So one thing you will notice later, like very soon, is that I'm going to drift for a very long time in a row, and people might be like, hmm. But shouldn't he slide out? Is he cheating? Well, not really. I just go neutral on the stick uh, now and then, because that will neutralize the uh, sliding out thing. So I would just go sp like drifting around the entire uh, hill. And usually we go for that balloon, but it's a risky because you can fall off. So I'm just, uh, I'm just not going to do it. Okay. So yeah, it's not the, a very difficult boss. And as you might notice in general that we're lapping all the characters all the time, it's because this game doesn't have any rubber banding like Mario Kart games and stuff. So if you're 
a lot faster than the actual uh, CPUs, then you're going to destroy them. So the challenge in this game is not to win. It's just to be as fast as you can. There's very complex uh, game mechanics. It's very difficult to master. And the main things to learn is like to um, is to keep the boost speed as long, long as possible because most people cut it off really short, like really short. Okay, so now that we beat the boss, we're entering the levels again, but now this time we're going to collect silver coins. So we need to collect every eight, the eight coins in the level and win. It makes the uh, route a little bit more interesting sometimes. One thing about the silver coins is they have pretty forgiving hitboxes, so you like, kind of need to come close to them, and sometimes you'll just pick them up. Oof. Another thing we could mention is that um, the the blue balloons that we use, we only use them as like single balloons. Okay, and we're not using like double or like triple because you know you can use power ups, but uh, it doesn't put, like the power up only extends the boost length and not the uh, actual speed. So just chaining as many single boosts as possible is more effective. And you'll notice that he'll skip the key because we don't need the keys in this category. Yeah. And you will you'll notice why in uh, some time. So this coin challenge is kind of difficult as well. Uh, it's not that forgiving, but it shouldn't be a huge problem. And you see that I'm collecting bananas. People might know what they do, but some people don't. So I'm just going to tell you what it does or what they do. Um, they basically they ha increase your uh, top speed and your acceleration. And I think Al may mentioned it a little earlier, but because of, the, the, uh, because of that, we try to collect as many as we can early on, so we have like a higher average speed over the entire track. That's all right, I needed this coin anyways. That's really good. Uh, but, okay, so in this level, you saw that I was going out of bounds earlier. Uh, I will actually do that this time too, but I'm not going to do it until a little later because I need to collect the coins, right? Yeah, guess what we're going to do now? <clears throat> and I'm going to enter in bounds again just because it's easier to get the cuts and skip that way. Because doing it blindly when you're out of balance is very difficult. Okay, so it's time for uh, the second boss race. It's kind of similar to the first one, but it's supposed to be harder, but you know, 
it's not that much harder. There's one main difference, um, and it's that the shortcut in the middle of the mountain is not going to be used this time, because uh, the developers were a little, I don't know what to call it, mean maybe. But they took away the zipper from inside, so it's actually slower to take the shortcut. So it, we're just going to go around it. And these tall pillars are supposed to fall down, but that's only if you're behind Tricky. But since we're TT, we're never really behind Tricky. Yeah. All right. We did just receive a $20,000 donation. Hey y'all, Yeti here. Thanks for breaking the website and probably breaking it more after this donation. The runs have been incredible so far. It's only the beginning, but I have been loving every minute. Swag, Swag ending up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So now that we're done with uh, the second race, we have unlocked the trophies. Um, so this is the, the journey of getting the uh, four trophies. And uh, yeah, we'll just drive there and uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we're going to see Ancient Lake again. I hope you like that track. Yeah. So this Wizpig piece of the, of the amulet is unlocked. You know, it's going to open the, uh, the mouth of the cave thing. So you get into... Uh, was big one, but as you all know, uh, we have already completed him, so it's kind of worthless to give me that now. Maybe I can sell it for some money or something. <laughs> okay. Just saying that we did it, hit $100,000, so that's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so a couple of general things about the DQR community, maybe. Um, you can check out the leaderboards for the speedrunning on uh, speedrun.com slash uh, DQR. And we also have, it launched now in February, uh, we have a website for DQR time trialing called DQR64.com. So if you like DDCon Racing time trials and you didn't like, you haven't known where to look, then that's where you should look. One thing you'll notice about the trophy races is there are no cutscene skips, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about them that much anymore. And also, another thing I mentioned a little earlier, but you might notice now, is that the CPUs are a bit faster in the trophy race, and uh, that affects, like, it affects the, uh, the pattern of like, the uh, oil sticks and stuff. So. We don't have to worry about getting destroyed in front of the zipper like we did last time. So yeah, basically, if you want to practice this game, it's good to practice different kinds of races, races because uh, the AI moves kind of similarly every time. So you can like predict a lot of things by just like doing the regular race and doing the uh, trophy race. OK, so even Jungle Falls is my favorite track, but we're going to talk about something else. So in the next track now, I mentioned earlier that Hot of Volcano was very special. And maybe you thought it was just because of the out of bounds thing, but that's actually not the case. It has something way more important for this category in it. And you will see it very soon. Right. So not only are we going to go out of bounds, we're going to do a trick. We're going to hit a loading zone that's underneath the finish line. It was randomly found by a guy called Faj, and 
we have just tried to uh, just like check into the property. So well, maybe him. Oops. So if you drive into this loading zone here, we will end up in the uh, overworld like this. And we, you know, I mentioned in the in the beginning of the run that it's luck based, and the like on the Japanese cart, there's actually there are actually three different spots you can get get in. And the spot I got to now is a, uh, the worst one. But I, because this, that's the most common one, that's why I'm doing the safe route. So I'm glad I did. Uh, uh, right now, the game is in a pretty odd state. It still thinks you're in the trophy race. So you've done three tracks of the trophy race. The trophy race is normally four races. Exactly. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to we're going to trick the game a little bit. So as Al said, we're going to have, uh, like, it thinks that we're in the fourth race of the trophy. So we're just going to enter another world here. So we're just going to go to Snowflake Mountain over here. And what the game does is that it's, when you finish this race, it won't check for, like, oh, you started the race in uh, Dime Domain. No, it's going to check where you finished the race. So. What does that mean? Well, it means that when I finish this race, uh, I will actually get trophy points for the uh, Snowflake Mountain trophy. And uh, that means that I'm going to get the trophy for this world. And that's the main idea behind this category is you just keep going back to Dino Domain and then replicating that trophy state and going to all the different worlds and getting the trophies from each world. Yeah. Because. What you, as we said in the beginning, what you need to do to unlock the last world is to get all the trophies, and you need to uh, uh, beat Wispick. So instead of doing the entire world with like unlocking you know, like with silver coins and everything, we're just gonna do this one race through the uh, trophy storage, and uh, there we go. Yeah. That's the. Uh, it looks like the end domain, but it's actually Snowflake Mountain. And we will have to beat an additional couple levels to make sure we have enough balloons to go into windmill planes. Yeah, because that's the thing. I said it was luck-based with the uh, with the wrong warp. And the other thing, the other two things you can do is that you can go to the overworld in the previous vehicle, and you can also go to Dragon Forest, but in a plane, and that's the preferable one. But it's around 10% chance that it happens, so it's uh, yeah. Not something that's good to rely on in a marathon, you know. But the idea with the dragon plane, or the dragon force plane warp, is that you can fly out of bounds and enter a race early. But now we actually, uh, whoops. Now we actually have to uh, get enough balloons so we can enter the first race of the, uh, dragon forest. So instead of having 11 balloons that you can finish it with, uh, with the regular air percent route, you can, you will now have, need to have 16. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a shout out and an apology at the same time. Uh, we're gonna be transporting through the hover crafts and the hover challenge, and I'm gonna exit it because I don't wanna do it, because I hate it. No, nah, it's because you don't need to do it. And uh, DQR Patty and one of my uh, friends in the, in the DQR community, he is his favorite race, so I'm sorry. <laughs> you can read some donations if you want to. Okay, I have a $10 donation from Sarah and Eric. So proud to watch my brother do his second run at a GDQ event. We are cheering you on from Sweden and wish you all the best luck. Thank you. $300 from Stone Cold Hard 12. Oh, wow. wow, okay. Shout outs to Diddy Kong Racing Community and one of my all time favorite runners, Giz, for running Diddy Kong Racing at this GDQ. It's for a wonderful cause that is what makes all of the speedrunners having a caring heart for every, everything that Doctors Without Borders does. This donation is going towards getting the new rainbow coin for the Donkey Kong 64 no levels early run. Awesome. awesome.
$50 donation from I'm Gonna Wreck It One. First time donator, long time watcher. Diddy Kong Racing is the reason I got into speed running and still watch today. Shout outs to Giz for keeping the community amazing and good luck on the run. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Thanks. So yeah, I hope you like Time Domain, because <laughs> we're going to see it a couple of times. So like these jumps are very d difficult to get, because they are usually, like depends on lag, and depends on the angle you enter the zipper, and stuff like that. And there are a lot of things in this game that are very complicated. But that's one of the things that has kept me playing this game for so long, is that like the skill ceiling is unlimited, basically. So we just keep playing and playing and playing. We get better and better and better. And the races go down in time. But it always feels like, ah, we can always do this better. So yeah. And shout outs to other top players like, uh, like Obayo and Tofu for like a Nordic BOA and keep just pushing the game down. I have another $300 donation from Olympus72. Yo, Giz, good luck on the run. Looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the crew later this week. Haven't donated before, so I'm donating 100 for each SGDQ I've watched. Put this towards runner's choice. Awesome, Olympus. So let's see what luck we have this time. OK, the worst one again. That's fine. <laughs> So now we're going to go to Sherbet Island. And uh, the thing is, we need to have 16 balloons. So we're going to get the trophy in Sherbet. And then we're also going to do um, two additional races. So we're going to enter Whale Bay, because it's the shortest race that's accessible in this world. Because technically, Trisha Caves is actually a shorter race. But you need 16 balloons to get in there. So you can't actually do it. We just have to do this one. Uh, but, this, yeah. this is one of the few tracks where you don't get 10 bananas because they're just too far out of the way, and it's a pretty short track. And one of two courses where you don't press start, restart in the beginning. Yeah, that's right. So as you can see, like when I'm doing my, my movements with the hovercraft, I'm like wiggling back and forth. It's a technique called snaking. And the reason we're doing it is because when you're turning in hovercrafts while holding the R button, like if you turn slightly, you will actually increase your speed a little. Whoops. All right. Uh, so what we do is that we just turn back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to, uh, you know, to keep the speed from uh, from the turn, but we still go in a straight line. So it's going to be fast. And that's trophy two. Yeah, trophy two. Another Dino Domain. <laughs> but yeah, now we're going to do Whale Bay again. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's short. And we need another balloon. And of course, if we're going to play some hovercrafts, we should do some shout outs to the hover gods of this game. Uh, Brendan Banks and Stacey Needham. Brendan Banks is the time trial champion in this game, actually. Has most world records out of all players. With 39 world records, which is very impressive. I only hold 37 myself, so. One thing we haven't mentioned yet, uh, which might be interesting for some people, is that the, the world record, and the world record is 39.51, uh, and it's held by me. I got it a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, it was 
good timing, I guess, for the event. It's kind of me and uh, another runner from the United States. He uh, uh, called Tofu. Him and I are usually battling back and forth with the world records in 100% and 100%. But yeah, I'm not from the United States, I'm from Sweden, so. All right. That was, that's at least the last cuts and skip we have to do in this run. So, yeah. And that's the last balloon we need for the run, too. Yeah. So that's the last balloon. So now we just need to collect more, two more trophies. And first, we have to do the uh, dragon, no, the Dino Domain one. So we're just going to play through it this time, and we're not going to use the wrong warp because it's kind of necessary to do. Well, I'm doing some shouting outs as well, like with my team Sweden, with uh, Habbe and uh, Kalle W, which are great players. And uh, I have to say it, but. The guy on the right here, Blake, his, uh, his, he has the fastest time in Ancient Lake in this level. And he likes to brag about that. <laughs> it's, it's suiting that his name is Blake, right? So Ancient Blake, let's go. There's an email for that, FFC. Yeah, please no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we can have another nation if you want to. All right, we have $175.45 from Cody CX. What's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? One will see you in a while, and the other will see you later. $150 from Our Bitter Sands. I've been waiting all summer for this week. Love watching SGDQ every year, especially now that my son is starting to get into it as well. Thanks to all the runners for donating their time for such a great cause. So yeah, that ending part is very difficult with the, uh, all the bumps. So it's pretty common that you, that you bonk if you don't take it really easy. And it's not fun to take it that easy. I have a $50 donation from Silence Erupts 90. Hey Giz, hope you have an amazing time in America as well as an amazing run. Make sure you take out Giz Pig, donation to Runner's Choice. Thank you. Shout out to my first ever subscriber, Solid Surrupt. <laughs> I can turn on the speedometer if you want to see how fast you're going. And this track's a good representation of how to keep your speed throughout the whole entire course. You will notice he only loses his speed for a very short amount of time. Right. So this time we're actually going to finish uh, Hot Top Volcano. Because we need the Dragon Trophy. No, the Dino Trophy, I mean. You can actually do a slightly faster strat for this level, but if you miss it, you risk losing a lot of time, so... And it only saves around a second and a half to do it, so... I'm just not gonna risk it. And one thing we can also talk about about this game is that uh, the music is really great, and... It keeps you motivated to play through the entire run. <laughs> Wait, did I miss it? Okay. 
So, uh, but one thing that's a bit sad about the music is that when you do time trialing and stuff, uh, you usually turn off this game sound because uh, the in-game sound actually creates lag on some levels. So um, in general, it's slightly faster to play without music. So in, um, in yeah, if you see like time trials and stuff, it's usually without sound. And uh, also the category all trophies is usually without sound as well. But the 100% and the 100% uh, categories are usually with sound because, well, almost always, because you need to reset the console a bunch of times. So, yeah. Then you would have to turn off the game sound every single time you reset, and that's not going to save enough time. So you're going to lose time on doing that. I've tried. And it's funny because some uh, tracks actually are faster with music on. Yeah. Just so, due to lag. Yeah, so it's really weird sometimes. Like sometimes it's good to like save lag and sometimes it's good to not have have it. So yeah, it's a it's a very unpredictable game in many aspects. But it's uh it's a very good game. And uh, I would recommend people to try to learn how to become good at it because it's like it's a very deep game, and it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, like, it, it can be pushed way further than it's pushed right now, but we're trying as good as we can. And another thing, like, about balloons is that one thing you, like, might see is we're basically not aren't using like any kind of balloons except the blue ones. It's because, oh wow. It's because they're kind of useless. Like you don't really have any, uh, yeah, you don't really do anything with the other, the other ones. The one, like there are two, two that are good sometimes, like very situational, but the shield is good sometimes. Uh, for example, in Jungle Falls actually, on lap two, and I can tell, wow, right, <laughs> that's not too bad. <laughs> nice. I can show you where, where it is. And also, the magnet can be good uh, sometimes in hovercraft because uh, you lose like you lose speed when you're in the air for too long. So sometimes you can use a magnet to get down to the ground as fast as possible. Uh, but it's very situational and very rarely used. Another thing in this game, in car, whenever you're in the air, you keep your speed. So if you hit a boost and then are airborne, you'll keep that. Uh, boost speed for longer w compared to just driving on the ground. Yeah. So that jump right there, he's purposely hitting that to keep in the air longer, to keep that boost for longer. So let's see which wrong warp we get this time. Probably overworld. 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 That's going to lose me like 10 seconds. So, it's probably the, what, that one. All right, we got the same one every time. It's a little boring, but that's how it is. Okay, so the only level we can enter is uh, windmill planes. So we just have to deal with that. It's the longest level of the, in the world, but yeah. Or maybe it isn't. So this level has a very difficult trick that I'm going to try to do. Um, that will save me a bunch of time. But yeah, it's very difficult to, to do. All right, nice. 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 <laughs> so that other bounce trick is very, like, very difficult. And yeah, <laughs> required a lot of practice to, to get. And you can see, like, the out of bounds of route is also a lot harder than, like, Hot to Volcano, where you just go back and forth. Here you have to avoid, like, getting back in bounds, and there are, like, areas that are deloading and stuff like that, so you have to kind of know where the, the map uh, loads and deloads while you're trying to go fast. Because the speed is kind of high in the plane, as you're using the barrels. That was solid. Nice. So now we have all the trophies. Uh, so we can actually go to the last world now. Cool, right? 
But there's actually a little problem right here. And it's that we only have 16 balloons. And to do the races in Future Fallen Land, you need 39. Uh, and you also need to beat all the mini games to to open the TT door that opens the door to the final boss. So yeah, basically we're going to try to avoid that as good as we can. And uh, we're going to talk to a little friend of ours, and uh, ho hopefully he will help us out. Is he really a friend? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see after this uh, if he's a friend or not. So yeah, flying into space with a lighthouse. So we're gonna talk to this guy. An awkward meeting. He looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to lure him into this cave right here. Let's see what he likes about, uh, thinks about that. So it might look a little weird that we try to lure him in here. But as you can see, like we're actually progressing towards this tunnel where the trophy race is. And uh, yeah, in here, we want to see if he can help us out or not. It's a slightly repetitive trick, but you know. <laughs> All right, okay, so the, the idea is that we want him to get in, in a good position. It's very hard to do it correctly. Like, we don't really know exactly how to set him up correctly, so we did have to uh, be a bit lucky. So hopefully it doesn't take too much time. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh. And there we go. <laughs> The trick is very difficult. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time for the final boss of the game. So yeah, we didn't have to do Future Fun then. We just let our buddy slap us as hard as he could, so we flew over the wall. So basically, like he stood up on that ceiling as you saw, and he draw, like he's climbs up really quite fast and climbs down really fast, so like falls down, and uh, he like transfers the momentum over to you, and you fly away. So the time comes up when I finish the, uh, the race. Time for the last out of bounds of the game. Nice. Like this one's a little trickier when it comes to the triggers because uh, in bosses they take away the indicators, so we can't really know exactly if you're doing it correctly. But we should be good. So time will be coming up in a few seconds. And time. time. <laughs> All right. And that is Diddy Kong Racing 100%. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Giz, for the Diddy Kong racing run.
Um, I'm going to be off the mic, but I'll be passing it off to Purple Ghost Casper. <laughs> 